Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse for a Division IV District Semifinal between the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays and the Crestview Knights. Our pregame tonight, presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Mark Bagley, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from the Elida Fieldhouse as the winner will move on to play the Ottoville Big Green, who grabbed a victory earlier tonight. And Mark, when you take a look at this matchup, a uh, pair of squads that played not long ago in uh, early February with Delta St. John's grabbing the victory. Uh, what are we expecting to see here tonight for our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game? This is another great matchup tonight. This district is the best district in Division IV in the state of Ohio, and I think we're going to see another great game. Delta St. John's got Crestview early on their home floor. Uh, Crestview's really balanced. St. John's has got a phenomenal freshman and a great team, and, and I really expect a great game tonight. So when you take a look at these Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys of the game, first for St. John's, quickly, what stands out for the Blue Jays that they've got to accomplish? They've got to defend all five. Crestview is very balanced with several threats. They've got four guys around 10 points a game. That's their first key. Number two, they got to rebound on the backside. Win the war on the backside rebound. And number three, offensive execution, ball tough, and finish plays. And then for the Crestview Knights, what stands out for them that they've got to accomplish if they want to move on to Friday night? They've really got to make transition D and match Delta St. John's physicality. And number two, they got to be strong on offense. Catch the ball and execute in the spots they want to. And number three, limit Elworth's touches. Does that mean possibly a box and one tonight, Garrett? We'll find out soon. We'll see our keys to the game presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area for over 100 years. So that'll do it for the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. When we come back, we'll have first quarter action and starting lineups for you in this Division IV District Semifinal here on WOSN. About to meet the starting lineups for tonight's Division IV District Semifinal between the Delta St. John's Blue Jays and the Crest Unites. First, the officials for tonight's game. And we appreciate uh, all of our officials here, especially during the tournament, giving up their Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays to make sure we've got high school basketball as we hit the road to date. Crestview and Delta St. John's played on February 4th, a 48-43 win for the Blue Jays in their starting five. Looks like that Cameron Elwer and Landon Grothaus, all MAC first team performers for the Blue Jays in 2023, joined with Nolan Schwinnin, Austin, and Aaron Munter, rounding out the starting five for the Blue Jays. And then when you take a look at the other side, the Crest Unites. Mitch Temple, Gavin Etzler, Rand Sheets, Carson Hunter, and Nate Lickley. The starting five for the Knights. Gavin Etzler, a first-team All-Northwest Conference performer. Delta St. John's comes in tonight 17-7 on this season. Finished in third place in the uh, – tied for second, I beg your pardon, with the Midwest Athletic Conference. And then averaging 52 points. So not necessarily an explosive offense, Mark, but uh, a pretty efficient one. It is, and again, it does revolve a lot around what Cam Elwer does, but he's unselfish too as well, and especially if they play a junk defense tonight, a boxing one or something else, and they have other capable players, and those players will have to play well tonight because Crestview is so balanced. Crestview 20-3 and three on the season, the sixth-ranked team in the Martin RPI and the second-place team in the Northwest Conference. 57 points per contest, average margin of victory 14 points, and when you take a look at them offensively, don't necessarily have a, a go-to guy that they know when we need a bucket we can go to, but they've got a couple of different options that each can, can do their own damage offensively. Yeah, and, and kind of the unsung hero this year, leading scorer is Ren Sheets, the sophomore, the one sophomore out there with a bunch of seniors. And, and he's really an X factor because at 6'6", he prevents size problems for St. John's. Uh, he can control the glass and do different things there. So. He's kind of an X factor, but it takes all their guards with Etzler, Temple, Hunter, and if Lichty gets hot, that's the X factor for Crestview too is his three-point shooting, and he's gone in bunches this year when he gets hot. Yeah, absolutely. Hit ten three-pointers in the victory over Hicksville earlier this year to set the school record, and as you see, the winner moves on to play Ottaville, who grabbed a four-point victory over the Kalina Wildcats in the first game here from the Elida Fieldhouse. So we are now introducing the starting lineups, and when you look at the matchup and you, you kind of just go 
one side of the, the sheet to the other. You mentioned that size from Wren Sheets. Got into foul trouble in the sectional final uh, against uh, Miller City, uh, which is something to watch and maybe something Delphi St. John's is going to try to attack to, to see if they can get him into foul trouble. I think so. And they're going to try to spread him out. St. John's will spread him out with their lineup and it's guard heavy and oriented. They're going to try to dribble drive. And I, I think they want to keep this game in the 40s. I think Cressy wants to get in the 50s. Uh, just like last game, I think uh, Ottawa wanted to get that score up a little bit higher, but they end up playing Clyde's game and won. And so I, I think this is going to be, again, another uh, chess match tonight, and we'll see, again, which team comes out on top. And, again, I believe this, the best uh, Division Four district in the state of Ohio right here tonight. So we've got eight minutes on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard as we get set to tip Ren Sheets and Aaron Munner, both wearing 33 inside the center circle. Delta St. John's in the blues, Crest Hughes in the whites, and we're underway. And a tip-off is won by the Knights as Mitch Temple will walk the ball across the timeline. Bounce to Gavin Etzler on the right wing. Gets a screen from Sheets. He'll rise and fire and splashes in the first bucket of the night. Big shot by Etzler. He, he's a player that can do those kind of things. And Delphus in their man-to-man -man defense to start with. Landon Grohnhaus into the near corner. Munner felt like he got fouled. Doesn't matter. Goes out of bounds with it in a quick turnover. Goes to the Crest Knights. And I couldn't quite get to that, but I think it was the box and one of nothing else. He's being face guarded early on by Crestview. 7.30 to go. Temple to Atzer on the right side. Has the only basket for the Knights. Finds Sheets wide open. An easy layup for the 6'6 sophomore. And it's quickly 4 0 Knights. And both plays, Garrett, have been high ball screens for Etzler, and he made the right decision both times. Hunter. Knocks Elwer to the floor after he got in the air. So the first foul committed by either squad. Committed by Carson Hunter of Crestview. So Crestview saw something on the film, Garrett, they liked with the high ball screen. They've been effective. That's what hit a jump shot, then found Sheets on the, on the roll. Grothaus bounces to Schwinnin with his back to the basket. Guarded by Lickley. Holds. Bounces to Munner. Grothaus in the near corner. Surveys, drives in the lane, kicks back out. Munner, top of the key, tries to draw some defenders, gets to Elwer, double teamed, bounces. Munner, block, spins, rejected. There's Sheets being an X factor, and Delphus is, or Crest is playing man to man, but they're face guarding uh, Elwer. Hunter to the free throw line, jump stops, hangs, hits. Quick timeout called by the Blue Jays. We'll step aside as well after the Metzger Financial Services timeout. Crestview leads 6-0 early on WOSN. Out of the timeout, not the possession the St. John's Blue Jays were looking for. They turn it over out of bounds and give the basketball right back to Crestview. That's two early turnovers, and Crestview has really had a great start here. Three for three and ball string action everywhere right now for the Knights. Hunter in the lane, can't drop that one in. And a rebound secured by Elwer. He'll race up the side, the middle of the floor. As Grodaus tried to drive, fouled by Ren Sheets, his first, and the second committed by the Knights. And that's what Delphi's going to try to do, Garrett. Go right at Sheets on the dribble drive, and he's got one. Landon Grodaus bounces in to Munner, and Aaron Munner works to Elwer. Gets to the free throw line. Munner pump fakes on the three. Tried to get his pocket picked. Instead, Elwer will rise and fire for three. Long rebound comes out to Lickley. Temple pushes the tempo. Hunter baseline. Kicks to Etzler. Wide open for three. Short. And Schwinnin wipes the glass for the Blue Jays. Elwer. Munner right back to Elwer. Double team. Bounces out of it. And they're double teaming him on any kind of balls they're double teaming. When you're being face guarded, Garrett, you have to be a, a ball screener as well and a back screener. Grothaus for three. No. Rebound still loose. Goes to Atzler. He'll race. Hunter in transition. Window, no. Grothaus wipes the glass. Blue Jays come back quickly the other way. Crosses over. Rises. Fires. Drops. Silky smooth from Landon Grothaus for the first bucket 
for the Blue Jays as we're under five minutes to go here in the first quarter. And that's a big basket with him, averaging 11 points a game. He has to pick up the scoring tonight, and this tempo right now is Crusty's favorite. They want this fast tempo. Temple called for the, oh, it's a block. Thought it was going to be a charge on Temple. Instead, it's the first foul committed by Landon Grothaus of Delphi St. John's. That's one of those 50-50 calls, and, and it, what I like about it, they called something here. And block or charge, tough call, could have went either way, but you got to move on to the next play, both offensively and defensively. Good look at it on the Ultimate Outdoor Instant Replay. As Jared Harding in the game for the first time for Crestview received the inbounds pass. Etzler got some space for three, and he splashes it home. Gavin Etzler with five. And he's really come out aggressive tonight, and that's a big key for Crestfield. Grodhouse tries to get by Etzler, kisses it off the window, but sheets the rebound. Temple left wing. Gives back to Etzler. Approaching the midway point of this first quarter, 9-2, Knights with the advantage. Harding, isolated, spins, can't hit, and a rebound grabbed by Ethan Druckmiller of Delta St. John's. Elwer, into the near corner, Jack Gerker in the game for the first time for the Blue Jays. They're just putting new guys on Elwer. Hunter started with him, now Harding off the bench, he's got him on the face guard. We'll see that the whole night, fresh guys. Grothaus, jumper, hangs on the rim, won't drop, 3.30, Crestview, Temple in the lane, back to the basket, lobs back out to Etzler, and they'll run a little bit of offense. He can try to get the ball inside the sheets here. Lickley, Etzler off his screen. Temple crosses over, guarded by Grothaus. Picks up the dribble, slaps it to Lickley on the block. Temple checked to make sure he was still in bounds with three minutes to go. Good possession by Crest. You're trying to get the shot they want, and they're making Delphus look really hard by ball reversal. Temple. Sheets looking to post up, stolen away by the Jays. Elwer spins, gets rid of it. Gerker for a three, no. And a rebound to Temple. They'll race up the floor once more. Temple to the window, tried to bully his way to the bucket. Didn't hit the rim. And Elwer with the basketball. Tries to get past Harding, rises, fires, didn't hit. Early, early on, Delphus is one for seven for the field, and they're taking tough shots right now. Temple the step up three off the heel. Druk Miller the long rebound. Crestview told us they wanted to make Cameron Elwer's touches difficult. I think mission accomplished so far through the first six minutes. Yeah, Delphus is tired right now. They, they've got hands on their knees, and they got three subs at the table. Gerker bounces to Druk Miller, nearly poked away by Sheets. Druk Miller in the post. Kicks back out to Elwer. Jump stops in the lane. Grothaus for three. Yes! And if two guys help on, El on Elwer, that's the right play. And that's what Elwer does. The freshman, he makes the right play. Grothaus with all five of the Blue Jay points. Under 90 seconds to go here in his first quarter. Harding on the left wing with four the Knights. Gives to Etzler. Etzler's got five of his own. To the high post, nearly lost the handle, throws up a leaner. Sheets throws it back into play, which gives a little outlet for the Blue Jays. Roadhouse, block, baseline, kicks out to Gerker for a three, no. Less than 60 seconds remain in this first quarter on the Laudix Jewelry scoreboard. And both teams with seven defensive rebounds. There's been no offensive rebounds so far, Garrett. Then and Crestview's rushed some shots here after they've been a three for three. Good play to get inside. Sheets on a block. Lickley for three. Bang. And that's where he's deadly. He got his feet set. Lickley, he is almost unstoppable from that point in the floor when, when inside out happens. 30 seconds left in the quarter. Blue Jays looked old for the final shot, trailing by seven at 12-5. Grothaus guarded by Etzler. 
dance to the far sideline. Ten. Ella wants a high ball screen from Harding. They're going to double this. Gets it. And it's not going to get a shot off at the end of the quarter. Great defense by Crestview to close out the first. Knights lead 12-5 here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. 12-5 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Crest Youth Beneficiary of a couple of Lee Kinsel three-pointers. Hunter back in on uh, Elwer, face guard. There you see Elwer guarded by number 10 for Crest Youth. Aaron Munner. In a lane, working against Connor Sheets. Three on the way for the Blue Jays from Colin Feathers off the mark. The offensive rebound put back up and good by Cameron Elwer. His first basket cuts the lead to five. That's our first offensive rebound of the game. Hunter the hoop and the foul. In the lane, Carson Hunter drops it in, and he'll go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. And he's a really good athlete in the middle of the floor. He went left there and made a tough finish back to his right hand. And he's another X factor. Again, Crestview puts five of those on the floor all the time. And that's what makes him so hard to defend. And he had an excellent start for Crestview. I think Hunter had 16 points last week in the sectional final. Average is just five. Can't convert the old-fashioned three-point play there. So the score remains 14 to seven. Roadhouse on the wing. Nolan Schwinnen picks it up, gives to Etzler. Etzler in the corner. Elwer had three guys on him when he came off that screen right there. Roadhouse at the top of the key. Fakes the pass, can't kiss it off the window. Connor shoots the rebound. Temple quickly up the floor. Poked out of play by Landon Roadhouse. Nate Lickley will come back in a game for Crestview in exchange for Jared Harding. 6.48. Knights have certainly pushed the tempo here in this early portion of the first half. They have. They got off to a great shooting start and got a little cold there, but when they swing the ball, they are tough to defend from side, middle, side. Sheets catches the lob. Lickley off his screen for three. Nearly had another Lee Kinsel triple. Instead, the rebound comes down to Austin Munner. Elwer gives to Aaron Munch. Okay. Thought about that three for a moment. And besides Grothaus, who will step up for Delphus now when they're struggling to score points? Elwer, top of the key to Grothaus. Schwinnen will drive baseline. Goes up and under, and a great bucket there by the six-foot senior. His first. Makes it 14-9 with six minutes to go and a half. And that play happened because the ball went side, middle side. Lickley finds a cutting Hunter. Tried to go up and under, fouled. And he'll go to the least famous recipe free throw line once more. I can't say enough about Hunter. He's been super aggressive. He's guarded the best player. He made a great cut there, shooting two free throws. Hunter back at the line. Missed that one after missing the potential old-fashioned three-point play the last time. The score remains 14-9. As he drops that one in, Hunter down with five, his season average. Here with 5.50 remaining in the second quarter. It, and it feels like Crest is down with this game. It's only a six-point game right yeah. now, Garrett. Elwood. Free throw line, kicks, Grothaus, baseline drive to the block, kicks back to Elwer. Straight away, got another Lee Kinsel three-pointer. And that was just outstanding ball movement, and it ended with the dribble drive by Grothaus to find a wide open Elwer. Knights trying to get it to Ren Sheets. Do on the block, stripped, balls loose. He got a pile of humanity and a jump ball call, and the possession arrow favors the Knights. And that's a good old-fashioned Northwest Ohio scrum right there. And that's what you love to see. We had kids dive on the floor for a loose ball, and when it's all said and done, get up and play. 
520 to go in this in this second quarter on the Lattex Jewelry scoreboard. 15 to 12. Cressy with the lead in a basketball. Sheets the inbounds, gives it right back to Gamut Etzler. Lickley in the corner. Gives to Hunter. He'll hold high above his head. Look. Give to Temple. Free throw line, hands off to Hunter. Tries to turn a corner. Tightly guarded, will lob back out to Temple. Crosses over. Hunter leans and hits. Great possession by both teams there, and it ends up being on a switch. A layup inside. Elwer, guarded tightly by Hunter. Gives to Austin Munner. Free throw line, back to Grodehaus. Aaron Munner gives to Elwer. Double teamed, bounces out of it. Munner, short corner baseline, hands off to Grodehaus. Thought about the three, instead puts it on the deck. Finds, tried to find Austin Munner in the corner. And a turnover by the Blue Jays. And Delphus will have to make the adjustment here offensively. When they ball screen for uh, Elwer, they're doubling it. Now when he's the ball screener, that allows openings there for other teammates. So they don't have to adjust some of the thing. Make him a screener versus getting the screen. I think that will really help open up their offense. Approaching the midway point of his second quarter. It's a five-point lead for the Knights. Jared Harding. Gives to Lickley. Pump takes on the pass. Instead, gives to Temple. Etzler and a moving screen committed by the Knights. Goes against Jarrett Harding. His first. Team's fourth. And Delphus did a great job of chasing about four screens for Etzler there. And, and Harding moved at the very end of that last screen. Four minutes to go in the quarter. And the half. Blue Jays look to trim this advantage for Crestview. Munner gives to Grothaus. Finds a cutting Drew Miller. Easy layup for Ethan Drew Miller. And the lead's back to three. And what they did there is they cleared L on the backside and kick away backside help with a great cut there and a great finish inside for St. John's. And only down three points after all this, Garrett. Harding on the left side. Temple. Trying to get it to Sheets in the post, or at least trying to post up is the sophomore. And it's just a war down there right now. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat in the post. Harding throws left to Lickley. Temple works to the right. Baseline up and under. Swatted by Drew Miller, but a foul committed it by the 6'3 senior. And that will send Mitch Temple to the least famous recipe free throw line. And Crestview really needs Mitch Temple's offense tonight. And he hadn't scored yet. Um, he's averaged about nine a game. And he's one of those other players that can score in bunches. Got the first one. Nothing but net for his first point of the evening. Crestview. 20-3 and three on the season. The top seed here in the Division IV Elada District. As Temple got them both. That's what has been so good this year, Garrett. They don't care who scores. They all know their roles, and that's why they've been so successful. Temple, an honorable mention, all Northwest Conference performer. Backdoor cut to Elwer, and that's a great look for the freshman as he now has seven, and once more, the lead's still free. And I talked about that when you either back screen, ball yeah. screen, or back cut. And that's what they did there and got a backdoor. Lickley tries to slap it to Sheets. It's stolen away by Cam Elwer. The freshman He's got crosses three. over, kicks. Three on the way from Grothaus, short. Temple the rebound, and they want to run. Meanders through that Blue Jay defense. Harding stops, lobs back out to Temple. And Elwood made the right play there, but he had space as well. And, and as time goes on, he may take that shot. Lickley off a screen, lost it. Ball's loose. Still loose. Lickley goes up and over. And somehow ends up with a basketball. Etzler tries to go through a defender. And a blocking foul committed by St. John's. Garrett, I'm not sure to describe that last sequence of plays <laughs> except for unbelievable hustle by both teams. It ended up being a blocking foul on Delphus. And that's how close all four of these teams are in this district. Yeah, Lickley went up and over somebody. Landed on his feet. 
kind of shook off the cobwebs for a moment and then realized, why am I holding the basketball? But he had it. And the Knights retain possession as Nasir Easterling comes in the game for the first time for Crestview. They've gone nine deep here in the first half. Hunter, left side under two to go in the first half. He'll work to the high post. Kick as Isaac Klein threw it out of play. Nearly stepped out of play. Threw it to Hunter, who couldn't corral it inside the lines. And that's a turnover by the Knights. And that's the play where Klein tried to do too much there. And again, that's when, you know, Cressy knows the rolls really well, but he tried to do a little bit too much on the dribble drive penetration. There's Elwer. a double team on the ball screen again. Elwer wants the ball screen, tries to get through Harding, kicks. Roadhouse, Lee Kinsel three, no. Rebound by Harding. Hunter, 90 seconds, throws the ball up the floor on the outlet, and that is a charge committed by Gavin Etzel. That's about as violent a charge as you might see. Luckily, everybody gets up all right. We'll get another look at it on the ultimate outdoor. And he just goes right the old sweet chin music to Landon Grothaus. And this game, as we expect it would be, has been very physical. Um, and again, we have four and five team fouls right now. And again, they, they, they've called the blocker charge tonight. That's the thing that's, you know, uh, important for officials to do. So five fouls committed by St. John's, four by Crestview here in this first half. 90 seconds. Less than 90 seconds. And Dolphins has tried to go to the, the isolation where Elwood gets it, and, and Broadhouse is a good shooter. He's missed the last two, and yep. that's good effect. He's wide open. He's got to shoot that shot. Broadhouse looking for a screen. Gets it. Works to the wing. Schwinn in. Holds. Broadhouse. Tried to go back door again, and, and Harding did a good job that time. Elwood. Tightly guarded by Klein. One minute remaining in the half. Elwood. Had it stolen away. Hunter, the beneficiary. Temple, transition three. Bang! A big three ball by Mitch Temple. A Lee Kinsel three. Grows the lead to six in the waning moments of the half. And then a turnover by St. John's. Big finish by Crest. They, they had command of the game. Garrett, they lost a little bit. And now a huge three by Temple. Two turnovers uh, by, by Delphus. And... and we saw in both games, the end of the half is really crucial uh, tonight. And, and, and everybody's so even. Wholesale changes here for the Knights as Lickley, Hunter, Etzler, Sheets, and Temple. The original starting five. Lickley will come off the floor. No, he'll inbound. Yeah, they got their starting five back out here. They played nine guys, but they got their starting five back out here for this final stretch of, of 35 seconds. Temple to the right wing, leading by six. Gives to Hunter, 30 seconds. Tries to get past the defender. Elwer rips it away. Hurdles over Hunter. And with 20 seconds, he'll back near the midcourt stripe, left to the center circle. It's not a lack of effort, Garrett, but both teams are trying to do too many things one-on-one -on -one right now. 10 seconds and a half. Roadhouse. Bounces to Schwinnick. Munner for three. Rimmed out on him, offensive rebound and put back up and good by Austin Munner at the horn. Right place, right time for the 5'11 junior. A great first basket for Munner. Trims the lead to four at the halftime break. We'll see it on the ultimate outdoor instant replay. The three nearly went for Aaron Munner. Austin Munner catches, throws it right back up and in. And that'll do it for the first half of play. 22-18, and Crestview leads Delphi St. John's here on WOSN. Our halftime adjustment brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer for over 100 years. 22-18 Crestview, the lead over St. John's. And I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Mark Bagley. And Mark, when you take a look at the halftime adjustment, what did, um, what did Doug Etzler say to his Crestview squad? And what, what was the message from Aaron Elwood to his Blue Jays? I think first for Crestview, I think early on, Chief was really good. He, he, he only tipped one shot. He was one for one, had a block shot, three rebounds. It kind of went away from him. And he's got a huge advantage, though. So I think Crest needs to go back to sheet. And for Delphus, they're getting great looks for three. They're only two of ten for 20% right now. And they have to find a way to get 
Elwer loose, and I think the best way to do that is for him to back screen, ball screen, or back door. And so we'll see what kind of adjustments are made here in the third quarter. And, and that defense was effective for Crestview. Um, so probably not many chances that they'll, they'll change that up here at the halftime. I don't think so. And they just met Elwer's sphere there, but they couldn't turn the corner. Good defense by Crestview. Munner in the corner gives to Aaron Munner, Austin Munner. Schwinnick left side, hands off to Elwer. Roadhouse gives it right back to Elwer. Schwinnick with his back to the basket on the right wing, guarded by Lichwin. Lobs back door. Aaron Munner corrals it in the lane, leans, can't hit, and a rebound written down by Mitch Temple of Crestview. And that was again a, a, a possession of sheep causing a big change in that shot inside. Both squads turned it over seven times. Both squads got 11 rebounds in the first half as Sheets right to the window, the hoop and the harm. And I think Coach Essel heard me because they went right to Sheets and they had one opportunity. Yeah, it was deliberately going to the 6'6 sophomore. You see it on the carry insurance instant replay. Off his square. And now the sophomore goes to the least famous recipe free throw on. Got it. And he really is the key to this team. And if he does those kind of things, defensively, you saw a change of shot, got a rebound, and offensively, Kresge is so balanced, so hard to beat. Elwer into the corner. Austin Munner gives to Grothaus. Tries to split the double team, poked by Temple. And it'll stay with the Blue Jays. Grothaus had a lot of some opportunities in the first half, and he, he's a senior leader that has to score some uh, this half for him. Has five at the halftime break. Munner in the lane. Kicks to Austin Munner. Lee Kinsel three. No. Ball goes out of play. He goes to the Knights. And to give that possession, they made Elwood the screener, Garrett, but they missed another three in the corner. And that's a, now two for 11. And you don't make shots when they're open. It's going to be hard to beat Crestview. Seven point lead for the Knights. They've got the basketball. Temple tightly guarded. Hunter, top of the key. Surveys. Now puts it on the deck. A walk back to the center circle and bounce to Temple. Can they go back to Sheets here in the post? I'll try to get it to the side. Sheets posted up. Hunter straight away. Looks to lob. Instead, Temple for the Lee Kinsel three. Bang! Great start for Crestview. Inside out, the ball reversed. The Temple got a speed set. And all of a sudden, Crestview's up by 10. Largest lead of the game for the Knights at 28-18. Schwinn in for three. Tries to answer. Can't. Out of bounds off of Aaron Munner. And right now, the role players just can't make shots. They're wide open shots for Delphus. Uh, Trusty well scouted and a good timeout by Coach Elwer. Metzger Financial Services timeout with 5.57 to go here in the third quarter. Crestview leads 28-18 to on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, Carey Insurance in Grover Hill. Proud to sponsor tonight's high school basketball matchup. Division 4, District Semifinal. Gavin Essler tries to get to the window. Got his own offensive rebound, but slaps it off the floor out of play. Great hustle there by the senior. Tried to get to a tough spot. Lost the handle. And it goes to the Jays. Good defense by uh, Dolphins there. They, they need to score some points and, and get out of this. Rut the in right now and make some shots. Austin Munner pumps on the three. Drives baseline. Pulls back out. Roadhouse will do the same. He stepped, oh, nope, a foul committed by Gavin Etzler. Thought the call might be that he's Stepped on the baseline instead. It's a second foul committed by Etzler, the first of the half for Cressy. Roadhouse into Munner. Maybe wasn't expecting it. Elwer gives to Aaron Munner. Gives right back to Elwer. Double team. They'll chase him out They're just inside the midcourt drive. Munner hands off to Elwer. Schwinnin thought about the three. Gives off the Roadhouse. And Delvin's space right now is way off. Into the far corner. Lee Kinsel three. No. Offensive rebound, though, for Austin Munner. Fouled on the putback attempt. And he'll shoot two Lee's famous recipe free throws. 
Yeah, that's what they need to do. They, they've scored on every offensive rebound tonight, and just a great effort play on the back side to get there. Shot fake, get them up in the air, and now they got a chance to score with the clock stop. Trailing by 10, first free throw for Munner is up and good. From the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Austin Munner, an 80% free throw shooter, hits them both. Giving him four points on the contest as Jack Gerker comes back in the game for the 5'11 junior. And confidence is a funny thing. And seeing the ball go through the net, that's important for Delvis right now because they can't throw in the ocean from three. And, and to make a free, couple free throws, that's huge. First two points of the quarter for the Jays. As Hunter holds Temple on the wing. Sheets can't hit. Truk Miller, the rebound. Elwer to Gerker. Right back to Elwer. Four and a half to go in the third. Jump stops in the lane, hangs and hits. That's where he's really good. His strength for a fresh but incredible. His body control, his shoulders always squared. Lead now down to six. That's the Knights give it up. Etzler and a block goes against Landon Grothaus with 408 in the third. And the difference there on that play, the ball went from side middle side to Edsler, and that's hard to get set for a charge. To go from ball side to help side here, it's hard, and that was the right call for a block. 28-22. And we'll mop up the perspiration on the floor here. Let's see, a little squeakier than normal. Now we're all squared away. Etzler will throw it in. Gives to Sheets, gets it right back. Sheets in a lane, working against Drew Miller. Can't hit, another rebound ripped down by the senior. He's missed a couple good looks inside, but both have been great looks, and he just missed them. Elwer in the corner. Bounces, Grothaus. Takes the handoff, rises, fires, left it short. Sheets the board. And you can see there on that one, Grothaus guides the ball. Linkley transition three, no. Long rebound, comes out to Gerker. Nearly stolen away by Linkley. He commits the foul. And that's money most times, and he just missed it just in that bit long. Linkley deadly from the Lee a three-point range. And then you see he commits the frustration foul here. You see him slap his hands in disgust. And that's incredible that even though uh, Gus is up six, they do not have an offensive rebound tonight. That just shows you how well Dolphus uh, is in position to get every rebound the way they defend. Elmer receives the handoff. Top of the key working on Harding. Aaron Munner works from one side. Had his pocket picked by Temple. Two on two. Harding in the lane. Yes. Harding's a great athlete. He made an unbelievable play there to finish with a reverse layup. First point from a bench player for the Knights. Three in transition from Elwer off the mark. As we approach the three-minute mark of this third quarter. Eight-point lead for the Knights. Temple gets it right back after pass of the climb. Guarded by Grothaus. Bounces to the right. Klein tightly guarded. Harding gives to Temple. Tries to get past Grothaus, can't, stripped. Grothaus keeps it in play. Able to get past Temple. Cross court pass to Munner. Austin Munner off the screen. Gives to Grothaus, bounces to Elwer with his back to the basket. Guarded by Harding, isolated, spins, leans. Tough shot for the freshman and it goes. Great defensive play by Grothaus and then fed his team at Elwer and his body control, shoulders squared, just phenomenal for a freshman. It shows the strength and the skill level he has. Aline is down to six. Two minutes. Nearly. Got it, did Austin Munner. So 2.04 to go in the third. And Aline is down to six for Crestview. And Crestview's subbing a lot right now to try to get players rest because they want their best to be ready the last eight minutes. And again, 
Can Delphus get it below six before the end of the quarter? Counter Sheets, longest of minutes for the Knights. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout taken by the Knights before a five second call was on the referee's mind. 2.04 to go here in this third quarter. It's Crestview 30, Delphus St. John's 24. And we've seen St. John's make that halftime adjustment where Crestview double teamed Cameron Elwer every time he was coming off the screen. And um, really haven't seen that all that much here in that second half because St. John's hasn't really used him in that situation. No, they, they've adjusted on that, used him as a, as a screener down low and a ball screen. And they just moved him to the post too. So they're finding different ways to get Elwer the ball. And Delphus just keeps on fighting and strapping. Uh, that's what they do. That's what Coach Elwer teams have done. Um, he played for legendary coach Brett Norris. He played the same way here at Delphus and uh, continued that tradition. So they won't quit. Uh, it's going to be a great finish in the last 10 minutes. You talk about that post touch from Cameron Elwer where he leans and uh, there are not many players in the area, let alone a freshman, that can make the, the bucket that he made. No, and the amount of time he puts in the game, hours and hours of skill level and strength is what got him to this point in his career. Harding gives to Hunter. Right back to Harding. Tightly guarded by Austin Munner. Temple tries to turn the corner. Throws back out to Harding. Ball's loose. And a foul committed by Crestview on the loose ball. And with Etzler out and Sheets out, who's that go-to player for Crestview uh, right now? That, that was trying to get to do a little bit too much. And Dolphus once again a chance to cut that lead uh, to, to four to three points here on this possession. Elwer, right side, puts it on the deck, double teamed as he jump stops, wide open on the back door. Austin Munner can't convert, but the Blue Jays retain possession. That's that's the under, underestimation of Elwer, too. He's a great passer. His head's always up. Made a great play there, missed the layup, but again, hustle, effort, got the ball back. Roadhouse looks to get it in to Elwer. Contested three, short. Long rebound comes out to Hunter. Hunter races, and he traveled. Not care, I'll call it a carry. Nonetheless, everybody in the gym saw something that didn't look right. He had his head up, he had an idea, and once he realized that Delphus made great transition defense, he got caught in the air. Turnovers have become a little problem here for Crestview. And, and again, Delphus keeps on hanging around. If someone gets hot, it's going to be an interesting fourth quarter. Trailing by six, Blue Jays have the basketball as we approach one minute to go in the third. Aaron Munner, Lee Kinsel three, no. Carson Hunter, the rebound. And Aaron Munner, and he called for the foul. His second. Team's third here in the second half. Crestview's done a great job of subbing to get players blows, and now they have their starting five back out. And again, I would expect the set here to get the ball at least inside the sheets. He's a good passer to get some inside-outside action on, on this possession with a minute left in the third. And Sheets averages 10, has four so far here as we hit the waning stage of the third quarter. Exler, guarded by Drew Miller, bounces to Sheets. Down low, guarded by Austin Mutter. And a foul on the floor. Forty-two point four. The whistle came a little late. That's why he was funneled to the shot. So he was on the floor of the rebound. But again, they got the ball inside. That's what Crusty wanted to do. And both teams have four fouls, so we're not even close to bonus yet. Late third. Sheets will lob into Temple along the near and far sideline. Gets it right back to Sheets. Sheets tripped as he got it and turns it over. In the last four minutes of this quarter, Crusty has turned it over quite a bit. St. John's hasn't capitalized as Cameron Elwer will stand inside the center circle with 25 seconds to go in the third on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. It was four at half, Garrett, and it could be four, three, or six. Here to finish the third, we'll see what kind of action Delphus runs to finish it out. Roadhouse stands and watches the numbers tick. Now works to his right with eight. Gives to Schwinnick. Roadhouse. Druk Miller, an easy bucket and the foul. Once again, they use Elwer as a decoy, a slip screen, finish and one. 
And just like that, we're right back where we started, Garrett. We start the third quarter. Somehow, Delphins has hung around. Great execution and one opportunity here. Got a great look at it on the carry insurance instant replay. Drew Miller at the lead famous recipe free throw line. Drops it in. 1.5. Temple lets it go with the horn on target. Nearly got it. Nonetheless, we play three. Crestview, 30. St. John's, 27. Fourth quarter action coming up on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Proud to sponsor tonight's game. Our scoreboard presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Fourth quarter, underway, 30-27. Cressy with the lead in the basketball in this Division IV district semifinal. Winner moves on to play out of as the ball taken away by Austin Munner. And we talked a lot about turnovers in the third quarter. There's another one to start the fourth right off the bat. Delphi's physicality has really been a factor here as they've struggled to shoot it, but now they've caught fire. Lickley, the steal for the Knights. Lobs it up ahead. Etzler underneath the bucket. Temple for three. No. Wren sheets the offensive rebound, but a foul committed by the Jays. And a great response by Crestview there to get the steal. And St. John's had all the momentum and an offensive rebound there. I haven't seen many of those tonight. For Crestview, she's with a great play. Third foul committed by Landon Grothaus. Gavin Ensler looks to throw it in. Bounces to Sheets in the lane. And a foul committed by the Blue Jays. And the next one is going to be one one for Crestview. Goes against Cameron Eller, his first. Just over 30 seconds gone. Hunter, corner three, bang! That's a big Lee Kinsel three-pointer for Carson Hunter. He's got 10, lead to six. Huge shot, he's been awesome all night and played great defense, big time three right there. Cameron Elmer, jump stop, Schwinnin. Austin Mutter to Elwer, triple teamed, and he's called for the charge. And Preston answers right back to that run. Delphi's had a chance to cut that lead to, to one or, or, or two. And, and Preston's made two really good defensive plays. And again, there's a reason why they've won 20 games. Preston and St. John's played on February 4th. St. John's grabbed a 48-43 win in the Vatican. Preston needs to move on. Play Ottaville on Friday night. Back here live on... W-O-I-S-N. Looks like St. John's will go to a full, to full court pressure. And again, remember, they're one foul away for the bonus. See the special thanks there to Dave Evans, setting us all up and making sure we're well taken care of here at the Alada Fieldhouse. They always put on a master class on how to host the tournament game. Great gym for tournament. Lickley, pump fakes, steps inside the three-point line and drops it in. Lickley, the huge steal, the shot right there. That's why this team is really good. They've got a lot of players who can do a lot of different things. Now we're in a tight spot. Might need a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Didn't take it. Somehow Schwinnin ends up with the loose basketball. Now guarded by Hunter. A handoff to Landon Grothaus. You just wonder how much energy Delph has expended to get back in this yeah. game and how tired they are right now because Elwer never stops moving. Backdoor cut. Kicks out of it. Roadhouse, three. No, won't drop. Temple the rebound. Huge miss there. Rattled in and out. Lickley, pump fakes on the three. Baseline up and under. Got the hoop and the harm. Lickley. Aggressive to the window, got his seventh point, and he'll go to the line to try to convert the old-fashioned three-point play. And here's what's great about Nate. He's known as a shooter, but he put the ball in the deck there and just made a great play. A steal, a bucket, an and one opportunity. He's had a huge fourth quarter here in the first two minutes. Got a great look at it on a carry insurance instant replay. And now Lickley 
at the least famous recipe free throw line. Converts the old-fashioned three-point play. The 6-2 senior, and eight Hunt, points. And Hunter gets the well-deserved rest. He's gassed, and now it goes back to Harding to guard Elworth. Those have been the two guys on him all night long. Elworth's pass. Poked down a play by Lickley. And you can tell when senior-laden teams don't want to be done, he's in that mode right now. Absolutely. He, he does not want to be done. He, he's, he's exhausted, but he's, he's playing through it. He's calling for a sub right now. Lickley guarding Schwinnick. Munner pump picked on the three. Austin Munner gives to Landon Grothaus. Bounces to Elwer. Double team to the corner. Bounces out of it to Grothaus. Bullets a pass on a baseline. Can't finish. Can Nolan Schwinnin. Loose basketball chased down by Aaron Munner. The Dolphins have missed two or three of those in the third and fourth quarter. I think they're just exhausted right now. They've used so much energy. Elwer off a screen. Lee Kinsel threes. Good. And then he hits the three in my face. <laughs> and says, I'm not tired, coach. Eight minutes, or down eight with under five minutes to go. Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Crestview. We got a break in the action and a break here on WOSN. Easter replay tonight brought to you by Kerry Insurance and Grover Hill. Proud to sponsor tonight's game. Out of the Crestview timeout. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Metzger Financial Services helping you plan your financial future. Visit Metzger Financial Services. Com. Really one of those timeouts that kind of benefits both squads there, Mark, where it just everybody's a little gassed. Everybody could use a, a little breather and sort of reset here as we approach the midway point of this fourth quarter. Absolutely. Both teams are gassed. It, it's incredible effort. And neither team wants to, wants to go down tonight. They don't want to finish the season. They got sheets in the post right now. Temple. Looking to get rid of it. Gets it to sheets. Tough spot. Harding driving right down Main Street. He's really had a good game tonight off the bench. He's played great defense. Phenomenal athlete and just made a great cut there as Delphus watched the ball instead of watching the cutter. Austin Munner, Elwood working on Harding. Schwinnin, great anticipation by Mitch Temple, rips it away. And Crestview's a little quicker right now. They're a little deeper, and, and, and they've given a lot of guys rest tonight, and it's shown right now. Hunter to the window, blocked by Elwer, but he's called for the foul. Freshman picks up his third, and Carson Hunter will go back to the lead, same as recipe free throw line and shoot two. Look across the board tonight, and Hunter just has really made the big plays. That three to start the fourth quarter was huge, and Swirl that one in. So Harder stays at Hunter, I beg your pardon, stays at 10. And Slickley will come back in for Jared Harding. Harding's been a, or a Hunter, I beg your pardon, has been a pivotal player for Crestview tonight. 10 points and has done a fine job guarding Cameron Elwer, yes, holding he, him to just 14. In the one area struggle is the free throw line, and Crestview's the double bonus the rest of the way. Hunter picks up the foul. Thought he had a clean steal on Elwer. Didn't. And that's the sixth foul committed by Crestview. Second by Hunter. Looks like uh, Elwer's holding his thumb right now. Yeah, he is number 11 on your screen. Trying to kind of get away from everybody so nobody sees him. Favoring that finger. He has it on the right wing. Spins. Leans, too strong. Hunter rips down a rebound. And usually you miss layups inside like that, it's fatigue. Lake Lake, Lee Kinsel three, bang! That may be the knockout punch right there, Garrett. He's played a phenomenal fourth quarter, has put Crestview on his back and made all the plays. Largest lead of the night at 13. Foul on the floor. A big triple there from Nate Lickley on the Lee Kinsel three-pointer. Lee Kinsel on Irvin Road and Van Wert score big with one of their pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Start looking at the balance of this team, Garrett, and you start looking at the scoreboard. 11, 10, 8, 5, 5. It's all coming through right now. 
Elwert front into the one and one is good. He has 15. St. John's is a team 79% from the three point from the free throw line. They shot 79% from the three point line. Things would go very well for them. But Elwert missed the second. A little short. That's fatigue. Sheets got the rebound. Knights leading by 12. As Austin Lunner picks up the foul in the backcourt. Now Crestview shooting two least famous recipe free throws from here on out. There's plenty of timeouts left for both teams, but if Crestview takes care of the ball, makes free throws, Garrett, uh, we're starting to see a diff district final matchup Friday night. Ottaville on one side, looks like Crestview maybe punched their ticket right down. Temple, however, can't help you out there with the free throw falling. Got that one, however. Temple with nine. His season average. Elwood straight to the window, stripped. Fouled, and he'll shoot two free throws. Committed by Carson Hunter. That's his fourth. Something to watch. Elward back at the line. Nothing but net on the first one. And really, this is what they need. They need to go downhill, try to get the clock stopped, Garrett. Uh, hopefully, Crusty turns it or misses free throws. That's realistically the way to get back in this game. There's still a lot of time left, but lots of things have to happen right for Delphus right now. And Coach Elward calls the timeout to give his guys a blow one more time. Trailing by 11, a Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Delta St. John's here on WOSN. Instant replays tonight have been brought to you by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill. Proud to sponsor tonight's action. 44-33 the score. Crestview, the 11-point lead over Delta St. John's here in this district semifinal in Division IV. Winner moves on to play Otterville on Friday night. Jared Harding. Long inbound, a dangerous inbound, and it's lands in the hands of Cam Elwer. Elwer, top of the key. Austin Munner. Elwer rises and fires on the lead. Kinsel three. No. Sheets wipes the glass. And again, you see the shot starting to become short, Garrett. And trust you have to take care of the basketball and make free throws. That's what they have to do. Spread them out. Attack when necessary. Harding picks up the dribble. Gives to Temple. Sheets posting up. Etzler to the window. And a foul. Committed by, I believe, Austin Mark. And a really good job by Etzler there. He got Crestview off to a hot start, scored five early, but a good job yep. of body control and just really takes his time to go up strong there. You're right, Etzler had five first quarter points, has been silent since. That one too strong, so the score remains 44-33. Carson Hunter back in the game for Jared Harding. Aaron Munner returns to the lineup for St. John's. Esther got that one. Now it's six. Crestview pressures in the backcourt. Lickley will chase the basketball. Schwinnick up the far sideline. St. John's can't be patient anymore. They got to be aggressive. Roadhouse calling for the travel. And again, that was a huge hop step, but that little extra uh, shuffle there for the travel. Tough turnover after he hit the shot. Wouldn't be surprised if Tressie tried something long here. Nice inbound. Hunter. As Etzler called for the, or Elwer, I beg your pardon, called for the block. His fourth, trying to just steal a possession there. That's a good foul for Adolphus. Uh, the one area that Hart, uh, Hunter has struggled with tonight has been on the free throw line. Um, and so, Presley wants to try to get the ball in the hands of the best free throw shooters. And, and right now they're splitting free throws, it, it, it appears. And they're just trying to put this game away now and get to Friday night. Leading by 12, Carson Hunter, the six foot three senior, at the line. Not sure. 
Elmer mopping up some. Yeah, I think we've got Lake Elmer on the on the yeah. uh, floor down well, there. As much as that young fella moves around the basketball floor, and he's earned Lake Elmer on the floor. I feel a shot to the chest too. He's still holding that chest from that shot he took. Hunter has struggled at the line. Continues to struggle. Aaron Munner back in the game for St. John's. Well, offense for defense. And I think Coach Essel was about a 90% free throw shooter during his career. He's dying right now. <laughs> Hunter with 11. Cross-court pass into the far corner. Elwer will put up the Lee Kinsel three. Got it. That's your financial services timeout called by Delphi St. John's as they cut the lead back to 10 with two minutes to go. So certainly not over by any stretch of the imagination, but Crestview, I'm, and I'm certain, is the, the message to the Knights from Doug Etzler. we got to hit our free throws down the stretch here. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's a balance in how much you say there because you talk about it too much, then people start thinking it becomes right. metal. But again, we talked about it. If they take care of the ball, make free throws, they're going to win. And, you know, throughout this whole game, you think about St. John's has 36 points. They just subbed out Elwer. He's got 20 to 36, and that's been the only and main focus for Crestley. That just shows you how good he is as a freshman. Yeah, the low on the season for Delta St. John's is 36 points, so uh, conceivably going to get over then here in the final two minutes. But you see the rest of the upcoming slate here on WOSN with more live tournament basketball action for you coming up on Wednesday between Bluffton, Ottawa, Glendorf, and uh, you see that Division Three Lima Senior Sectional, and then Division Two at Liberty Menton will be live on Thursday night as well. Blue Jays tried stealing, stealing the inbound. The effort by both teams has been incredible, and, and diving to the floor, another play, they're just trying to make anything they can to, to get back in this game. And, Delphus obviously has to sit over here with four fouls, offense, defense, and uh, they spent a lot of this fourth quarter mopping the floor up. Uh, it, uh, it's a little warm in here, uh, which doesn't help the condensation, perspiration situation. Drew Boggs in the game for Delphus St. John's for the first time. Hunter looks. Somehow gets it in before the five-second violation. Blue Jays chasing the basketball. I think that was four and three quarters. It was certainly getting there. Hunter along the, in, along the sideline. And a foul committed for four of the inbound. Lickley sent to the deck. And we're going to need some more towels because, uh, once again, Lickley just fell down and got knocked down. I shouldn't say fall down. He got knocked down. He he has been unbelievable this fourth quarter. I can't say it enough what he's done for this team. Yeah, the it's, energy he's brought. The, the steal he had early, the three, the end one, the layup. Just really, and again, you look at the the, the scores up there, it just shows you how balanced Crestview is. That's why they've won 20 games. Well, when you come into the contest, Gavin Etzler averages 10, Mitch Temple averages 9, Hunter 5, Lickley 10, Ren Sheets 10. So you can't just focus on one guy and say, we're going to stop, insert name here. you got to play team defense against Chris. Yeah, the, the leading scorer has five points tonight in Sheets. First for Lickley is up and good from the least famous recipe free throw line. Now with 12. 6-2 senior. Back at the line. Hits them both. Under two minutes to go. Blue Jays trail by 12. Grothaus, floater, blocked by Sheets. Elwer, the fingertip, got it back up and good. Fouled. Lead down to 10 with 150. Great play by Sheets here. The ball kind of goes, and Elwa right place, right time, and once again got his shoulder squared. They just won't go away. Elwa, 22 of their 38. He makes this as a three-possession game. 23 for the freshman. We'll some back out. Again, playing four fouls. 
48-39. Hunter inbounds to Temple. Able to use the dribble to get out of it. Lickley in a corner in a tough spot. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout wisely called by Doug Etzler with 30 seconds. A 30-second timeout, I beg your pardon, with 141 remaining. Got 10 high school basketball games at 10 o'clock this week, Tuesday through Saturday. All this week, catch 10 games airing at 10 p.m. on WTLW and WOSN. Part of 24 tournament broadcasts this week alone. Tune in, you lose the remote, and you just watch high school basketball till it's time to go to bed or time to wake up, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat. It's incredible, Garrett, what TV 44 does. And they've been, you know, so good at Northwest Wild for so many years. The amount of games that are covered now are just unbelievable. 24 this week between boys and girls in the districts and regional action. And we appreciate everything WOSN TV 44 does to promote high school sports in the area. And all great sponsors help bring it to you. Carson Hunter looks to inbound as Lickley hits the deck. Temple receives the inbounds and then a foul committed by Colin Fetters. So Temple goes to the line, the 6-2 senior. Trying to salt away a victory for the Crest Unites, leading 48-39 on the loudest jewelry scoreboard. Shooting two, swirls that one around and out. Munner, L, we're back on the floor for the Jays. In the offense for defense for Rick Miller and Feathers. That one to go. Temple with 10. That's three and doubles now for uh, Crestview. Cross court pass, Austin Munner. Lee Kinsel three, no. Offensive rebound by the Jays. Grothaus puts up the triple. That one's off the mark as well. Elwer, the rebound, loose. Munner tried to throw up a putback. He's fouled, and Aaron Munner will go to the free throw line. And Coach Etzler is not happy right now because, again, minute 22, the, the they'll probably win this game, but to win a district championship, to advance in the regional tournament, those are the kind of plays, the rebounds you have to make. You can't, and that's the one thing that Cressy has struggled with all night, basically, is the offensive rebounds. They haven't gotten many of their own and given up a, a couple to St. John's. Exactly. The 6-2 junior at the line. Scores his first basket, of, or first point of the evening, I should say. Munner, an honorable mention, all Midwest Athletic Conference performer. Playing with three fouls. Shoots 61% from the league's famous recipe free throw line. Can't hit the second. Sheets the rebound. And Temple fouled in the backcourt. And Dolphins have a chance to everything to go perfect. They need to make every free throw, uh, have Crestview miss free throws, have a few turnovers. And Can't turn it over themselves, yeah. got to hit some threes. They're just running out of time right now. One timeout left, three possession game. Temple with 10, now has 11 on the main free throw. He's at the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken home style happens here. Temple that's, with 22, or 12, I beg your pardon. Yeah, that's three out of four for him. He's really been calm and, and collected at the free throw line. Elwer, double teamed, gets out of it to Schwinnin. Grothouse in the corner, drives, blocked. Etzler lost it, lands in the hands of Aaron Munner. Cam Elwer, Lee Kinsel three is short. And under a minute to go. 11 point lead for the Knights. As Hunter fouled by Landon Grothaus. And that will be his fourth. And again, Sheets has affected the game. Lee score only has five points, but he's blocked a lot of shots. He's rebounded well. He's really impacted this game. 
Hunter, who has struggled at the line so far here this evening, hits that one. He, too, now has 12. And 13. They're in a rhythm now for the free throw line. That, that, you hope that carries over the next game then for Grassview. Elwer, Lee Kinsel corner. I beg your pardon, Elwer got the offensive rebound. The three-pointer from the corner for Austin Munner. Elwer fouled on the rebound putback attempt. As Hunter picks up his fifth foul, and he'll foul out of this game with 13 points, but has done a fine job affecting this Division Four district semifinal. One of many players who really put a nice four game and defensively and offensively got Cresty going. Elwer now with 24 after the made free throw attempt. As the Blue Jays get a couple of substitutions as Colin Feathers and Drew Boggs will come into the game as Landon Grothaus will sub out for the final time as they help the St. John Blue Jay. Nolan Schwinnen also a senior coming out of the ball game. Blue Jays have had a fine season at 17 and 7. And that last sub is brutal because you know it's over and Grothaus has gone through all kind of injuries in his career and it's nice to give the seniors one last uh, round of applause because they put a lot of time and effort over their, their career in the program. And it starts as a young kid in third grade and it goes all the way through their senior year. Cameron Elwer comes out of the game for the final time, 25 points. And Coach Elwer's up to his bench. Joel Schrader in the game for St. John's as is Peyton Stabler. A couple of seniors. Getting some action here in the final moments of their high school basketball career. As Stabler comes out in a Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the Crest Knights with 30 seconds to go. A 60-second Metzger Financial Services timeout. So an 11-point lead for the Knights. They'll also empty their bench as Wes and Ludwig and Nasir Easterling, Tommy or Drew Nielsen, and Kellen Putman enter the game for the Knights. Yes. Our timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Also, our free throws tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe in Wap Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, homestyle habits here. And a lot of Lee Kinsel three-pointers tonight. Brought to you by the car dealership on Urban Road and Van Wert. Score big with our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. 30 seconds. Nasir Easterling gives Nielsen for three. No. Rebound pulled down by Colin Feathers. Poked away. Drew Boggs brings the ball up the floor. Kick in the corner. And with under 10, a three on the way for the Jays is off the mark. And the three at the horn from Peyton Stabler, no good. And that'll do it. Crestview, a 53-42 victory over the Delta St. John's Blue Jays. Crestview moving on to play the Ottaville Big Green on Friday night in a Division IV district final that you'll see right here on WOSN. So we'll step aside, come back, we'll name a Stolly Hustle Award winner and recap this 53-42 win for the Crestview Knights here on WOSN. Crestview wrapping up a 53-42 win over the Delta St. John's Blue Jays. They'll move on to the Division IV District Final Friday night back here at the Elida Fieldhouse, which you'll see live on WTLW as the Knights victorious over the Blue Jays at 53-42. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined Alongside Mark Bagley wrapping up this victory, and it's time to name our Stolly Hustle Award winner. And Mark, when you take a look at the, I mean, it was a balanced scoring effort tonight from Crestview. You got uh, 13 apiece from Carson Hunter and uh, Nate Lickley, and you got 12 from Mitch Temple. Uh, who, who, to you, deserves to be our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight? Well, Crestview's balance at 21 and 3 really came out, but it came down as we talked about to Nate Lickley as, as he finished the game. He had a huge steal to start the. The fourth quarter, hit a three, had an and one, had, had another basket, made free throws, 
Uh, defensively, he was everywhere, and he's known as a shooter, but he, he was a complete player tonight in that fourth quarter. And it, it could be the entire Crestview team, and that's why they're so good. And, and But hats off to Nate tonight. He played an outstanding fourth quarter and really finished the game strong. And Nate Lickley with his 13 points. He's our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Four more Stolly Hustle Award winners. Check out the WOSN YouTube page. So you take a look at the bracket now. Crestview, the num number one seed. We'll take on Ottaville, the number three seed, back here at the Elida Fieldhouse on Friday. Should be in for a pretty good game there. Should be a great game. And, and, and Crestview whacked Ottaville pretty good at their home court early in the year. That was a long time ago. And, again, this is everybody's goal in Division Four to right. get, get to Friday night. Get to Friday at 7. Um, in, in Northwest Ohio, whether it's Wapak, whether it's Elida, is so outstanding uh, in, in the basketball at, at this division. And so uh, these two teams got to Friday, and it's going to be an outstanding matchup with number one Crestview and number three Ottaville. Delphi St. John's led in scoring tonight. 25 points and six rebounds for Cameron Elwer in the losing effort as their season ends at 17 and 8. Meanwhile, Crestview moves to 21 and 3 with the victory. So that'll do it for us here at the Elida Fieldhouse for our fantastic WOSN crew tonight. Everybody here at the Elida Fieldhouse and back at 1844 Beatty Road. And Mark Bagley, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long. The final score, the final time, the Crest Unites win 53-42 over Delphi St. John's here on WOSN. <laughs>